You all know who the Odd Ones Out is. I'm not going to explain who the Odd Ones Out is to you. But if you know who he is, you know out of all the YouTube animators, specifically storytime animators, he's the top dog. He's the biggest bird out of all of them. And he surpassed almost 18 million subscribers. And over this period of time, over 2020 and 2021, I started to notice his content start to slow just a bit. And people were asking this question, why was that? And secretly revealed in 2022, he was working on a Netflix series. Now, everyone thought that a Netflix series would be perfect for James. And, you know, when I first saw the trailer, I was like, okay, this could work. I mean, it's... YouTuber shows don't have the best reputation amongst people. They just don't, and they aren't that great. And to be honest, this show is probably the best YouTuber show, which isn't saying a lot. Dare I not show what other YouTube shows exist. They are not worth your time. Do not go check them out. But specifically with Oddballs, it kind of works with James's personality and stuff. And the problem was that some people had with the show was first, that it was too kiddish. I'm sorry. Have you checked um, the Odd Ones Out main demographic? I figured that out very quickly when I went to Scribble Showdown back in 2021. That theater was packed with kids. So, it makes sense for why the show would be targeted at children. And two, people were just saying it was bland. Which I get why people say that, I'm gonna be honest. There are parts in the show where it's just like, yeah, I've seen this before, yeah, this is, I've seen this in other shows, which is kinda true. I mean, I do love the colorful cast of characters, but you can't tell me this scene right here was not even remotely similar to a certain other show. I don't know what it's called. May start with a G. May have aired on Cartoon Network. But that's out that's of the point. But I do love how all the characters are different and their styles and everything. It's pretty nice. Kind of reminds me of a certain show. But I think that most of these shows were inspired from other cartoons. That's kind of blended in all into one. I like the characters. I like Max. Like, the facial expression Max has reminds me of classic Spongebob days which how they use their animation back then. And you know what? It was pretty cool. I liked Max. Um, all the other characters were just fine. I just think that I get what people mean by when it was just okay. It was like, it, was, it wasn't anything groundbreaking. It wasn't going to replace Inside Job for me. But it was just, it was bland. It was okay. It was fine. It was good. And then season two came out and it got greenlit. So I'm like, oh, it made it past season one? That's a very big surprise. No Netflix show, no YouTuber show usually gets past one season, but surprisingly, this one did. I'm assuming Netflix has faith in it, because the first season did actually get into the top 10 list, so they, they see this show's potential. And season two released, and it's more of the same. I mean, there was still the mini driving plot regarding Toasty, um, but I'm gonna be honest with you, most of the characters, you know, are kind of the same. Not actually. I did notice that James in this show is a little more arrogant and a little more selfish than the first season. And I'm like, okay, this is a sudden change. I remember in the first episode, which an episode we've seen countless times in other episodes, a theater, a theater episode. And the second episode, a partner episode where they take care of a baby. I think I've seen that a little too much on Netflix. But then again, James is selfish. And it's just it's a continuing trend over this season. And I'm just like, hmm, can this work? Can this really work? And then we have the rest of the episodes, which I've got to say were a little better. And we'll get into that right now. Now, the episodes following these past two episodes were kind of following the same trope of previous things I've already seen in plenty of other shows. There was a swapping episode, there was a mayor episode, and a bullying episode, and there was all these other things that helped us get to know some of the more characters a little bit more. Mr. McFly was very present during this season, which I was not expecting. So, you know, I mean, they were trying new things with this show. And the whole end of season one, that whole quote-unquote finale slash story, I use story with a quotation mark, regarding Toasty never actually came up throughout the majority of the season. And that's where we get to the last episode, episode eight, surprisingly. It's not a full ten, which is usually the standard, so it does actually have Toasty in the episode, and he's a teenager now.
I don't know how he got to that um, stage that fast. I don't know how many, how long it's been since that episode. Maybe toasts age faster. The point is, is that he's an adult now. Well, not an adult. He's a teenager now. And now he has a lot more access to smart appliances and suits. And painfully, this whole season was just painfully mediocre. Like, it split the show. It's like, it's not bad, nor it, nor is it like... It's good, but it's like, okay. It's just literally the definition of an okay show. Most of the people reviewing these episodes are just giving it a solid 7. Some of them being bad, but most of them just being mediocre and just okay. And that's kind of the problem the show kind of has. There's nothing too exciting going on with the show. It's just your average show, basically. There's no I get some shows don't need to be that groundbreaking in animation. I get that. But with this, it doesn't add anything new to the table. It's something we've already seen countless times. So it, that's why I feel like people are just saying it's kind of bland. I don't think The Odd Ones Out is selling out. I'm sure he was ecstatic getting a chance to make his own cartoon. I would have been too if I had that chance. Maybe one day. But regarding that, they just didn't use what they had to the fullest extent. And, well... The final episode with him being a teenager, I feel like I already give that a 10. The Toast, the Toast, is voiced by Scott Mendel. If you don't know who he is, he is the voice of Robin in both Teen Titans and, I guess, Teen Titans Go. 10 out of 10 episode already. As soon as I heard his voice, I was like, wait a minute. I've heard this man's voice before. I knew it was here somewhere. And as I was waiting, eagerly awaiting this, all right, better than usual finale, and when the credits rolled, yes, he was there. Scott Memble was the voice of him. I was just like, yes, yes. I don't know how he found this show and got into the role for that, but perfect. I actually did like that. That was like the really thing that was like writing this review. That was my main hyper focus for season two. But overall, the show was just okay. It's not terrible. I, I make you watch it over Velma any day. I'm still going to be punishing that show with everything I talk about, but it's just, it's okay, it's nothing crazy, the main demographic is kids, but kids deserve better, that's what some people are saying with the animation, and it's alright, it's just, it's just alright, and they kind of tried to lead the show into something else at the end, it's some sort of um, end scene regarding Echo and a past someone from the future telling her that James is about to cost something in season 3. I think season 3 should be the last season. I think Netflix animated shows don't really go past season 3. It's starting to become a common trend. Usually gives you Netflix gives you one season. If it does well or okay, they give you a second season. If it does just as well but not so much, it goes to a third season. But if it's not where it needs to be at the third season, they cancel it. And that's kind of what happened. Um, Oddballs currently is not in the top 10. Uh, that's a little concerning. Maybe it's just the first day I've released, but this weekend I'll keep an eye on it to see if it's still, if it's, it has gotten to the top 10. But if that's not good, Netflix, that's not a good, that's not a good, uh, sign, because Netflix will be eyeing that show like crazy. But if they've already done all the episodes for season 1 through 3, then they should be fine. But regarding new, new episodes, like, making new episodes currently, that's not good. Hopefully, um... That doesn't end the case and just end the show right now. Hopefully it doesn't get the inside job treatment. The same case happens for the Cuphead show. It was in the top 10 for like a few days and then a certain show called Wednesday came and shat on it and it died. Unfortunately, I really do love that show too, but it's kind of a common trend. If it's not in the top 10, it's not staying around for a while. But that's our those are just my thoughts on Oddballs. Have you watched it yet? Have you had? Have you watched the first season? What do you think of the show generally? I think it's good. It's okay. It's not nothing groundbreaking in animation, and honestly, it doesn't need to be. It's a YouTuber show after all. But what do you guys think? Make sure to give you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for the support on these videos. And next week, I do have a mini announcement regarding the Oscar nomination videos that I'm going to be pushing out these next few weeks. And I will catch you guys next time in the next video. Just not Sunday. Because I remember saying something about Sunday, but it's not Sunday. Next time. Peace out, everyone.